the republic sat on the left. That's that's the basis of it. Well, precisely, ruling class forces, and and, and that content is well, not. I mean, in that right. context, it was it was uh, they were revolutionary forces. They were fighting feudalism. Well, but but, but hey, we're well, online. Hey, hey, good morning. Good morning. Seth, how are you? Doing well. How are you, Joe? You got a new haircut. I did. Exciting. Wow. The pre-convention discussion haircut. It looks nice. Let me take off my hat. You know, where I, my I always admire your haircut. It's uh, very my, nice. I got a nice haircut too. My tradition is that you don't wear hats in, inside or in, in church. You know, it's not respectful. Yep. So uh, I'm taking it off. So how are you? Doing pretty well. Lucia seems to be doing well. She's enjoying her breakfast here. How about you? Nice vacation. Um, Lovely. Yeah. Me, you know, I, Langston Hughes once wrote a book called I Wonder As I Wander. <laughs> and that's kind of how I feel today. I wonder as I wander. <laughs> All this crazy shit going on in the country. It's, yeah. it's, uh, but I'm still optimistic. Um, I heard uh, one, I was listening to a webinar, no, a video this morning, and one speaker said that there was a distinction between, um, what was it, hope and optimism. Mm-hmm. That optimism was shallow, but that hope was a deep and abiding concept. So I don't know if that's true or not. I'm both hopeful and optimistic, you know. So no, part of me, actually of, a, of something of a distinction in in French, uh, there are two words that get translated into English as hope. Uh, one is uh, souhaiter, which means sort of to yeah to hope something happens, to wish something happens. And then the other one is espere, which is a much deeper, like having to have a conviction mm. that something can and must happen, sort of. Okay. All right. So we're, we're both um, and uh, I'm going to remain that way. So on the issues this week, they're waiting for the uh, Mueller report to drop. We'll see, you know, when it, when it happens, it's going to happen. So we won't spend much time uh, on that uh, this week. Anything else that happened during the course of the week that you found interesting? Yeah, I know you were on vacation, so you may not have been. Yeah, able- and then uh, on vacation, and then trying to trying to catch up with uh, with, with back work and stuff. So well, let's talk yeah. about that a little bit. You're, you're working on the pre-convention discussion. Yeah. Um- and- so uh, first thing to point out, we have a um, uh, online discussion tomorrow night, 7 to 8.30 Eastern. Uh, you can find registration links perhaps in your email. You can find them on the uh, uh, party website, on the party Facebook. The subject is realities of the U.S. working class and the working class movement for social progress. Mm, that's some kind of title. Go ahead. And uh, so just to sort of get people uh, stimulate our thinking about that. We've been doing a thing called the question of the week. Uh, right. It's sent out by email and over the, uh, the party's text alert service. By the way, if you're not subscribed to text alerts, you can text the name Marks to 555-888 and that'll get you signed up uh, for- 555-888, okay. 555-888. And the question of the week this week is, uh, how do we win over workers who've gravitated toward reactionary movements like Trumpism? In well, that's a, that's a damn good question. You know, is it possible? I mean, it's got to be. Um, I, I think like we're responsible for the responsible for. That's a big word. We're um, we're supposed to fight for, fight with, unite the whole working class. So it's it's unacceptable that a section. Okay, but in practical terms, now Scott, and I want you to be honest. When on, on our Facebook page, when you see some Trumpite, you know, oh Trump twenty twenty, mm-hmm. uh, 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 make America great. Oh, hold Trump on. Hat, I mean, what yeah, do you? Lucia do you doesn't like it either. Just delete the cons. The the, the I mean, what do you? Yeah, no, but there's a couple of things that have to be said about that, I think. One is um, there's a distinction between somebody who, who is, you know, all into the, the Trump movement, a hardcore Trump supporter, go into the rallies, you know, uh, whatever. And then there's a lot of people that 
um, that aren't that, that vote for Trump nonetheless, right. that gravitate toward that. And so there's a distinction there. And there's also, you know, I think we have to really point out the, the class nature of that movement. Like, you know, we, we see all these, you look at memes on Facebook, uh, you get this picture of like typical Trump supporters, like they're portrayed as these like, um, back or overweight skilled worker kind of uh well either either yeah. that or or what often i mean the term the term white trash has luckily fallen out of favor it's not used very much anymore but that's the kind of pictures that people often associate yeah, with or as, uh most backward section of the uh, working crowd well you know i think that the basis of how to approach these issues is on the subject of self-interest. You know, I told a story on March 8th uh, about a coal miner strike in Alabama. Coal miners went out on strike real briefly and um, the vigilantes came to get them and um, long story short, the, the miners shot at and killed a number of vigilantes and they sent in troops to get them. Mm -hmm. uh, but the poor whites in the adjoining county cut the railroad tracks yeah, so miners were able to escape. So those poor white workers and farmers, I would imagine, sharecroppers, I imagine they must have had some reason that they had a common cause with the coal miners who were also, some were workers, some were sharecroppers. Well, you know, yeah, and, and, and stop that and from happening. And that, I think that kind of thing happened in the organization of the Steelworkers Union, you know, that, that uh, they were bringing in uh, uh, scabs you know, um, who were mainly African American, and so the white workers, and this was happened in Birmingham and, and uh, Youngstown and Cleveland, uh, Gary, that they had to deal with the issue of when they went out on strike. How are you going to respond to the issue of scabbing? And they had a self interest in uh, uniting with uh, those African American uh, workers. So. I yeah. think that's one of the ways, one of the key ways to begin to reduce uh, the amount of disunity that is uh, taking place in the class and breeding racism and right wing politics. Yeah, and, and that's 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 part of it. I mean, and because there, there are really two components there. It's not just self interest because it's easy to to tell people, you know, your self your self interest is this or. Um, or whatever. Is there a moral dimension to it? I mean, it's got a, 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 they have to be involved. People learn through being involved in struggle um, right. around their self interest. So that's, mm -hmm. you know, there's that. But I, I don't think we can reduce it to self interest. Um, well, I didn't reduce it. I said it's the beginning of, uh, the, of the, and that self interest is something that comes out of struggle, you know. Yes. You begin if, you look at, if you look at the way the right wing appeals to people and, and, and what, what resonates with people, a lot of it is, um, is precisely the opposite. It's this idea of, you know, oh, why do, we, why do we support cutting all these public services that hurt us? Oh, it's because, you know, we need to leave something better for our grandchildren. Oh, it's our, our duty to the country. We need to make the country. So those are, I mean, those are ideas that are used to, to draw people to wrong conclusions, but they show that, that people don't just respond to their own immediate self-interest, they're also motivated by um, a sense of the good of the collective that gets twisted by, by the right wing into something anti-working class. Yeah, to, to me, that's part of, broadly speaking, collective self-interest. The other thing is that um, there are moral issues that are involved and, you know, you can't also go from A to Z, you know. Um, there's, there's sometimes the point is to, um, how to put it, neutralize the, the mm -hmm. you know, you, there's, you take the issue of racism, you know, to move somebody from a racist position to a, we would hope, anti-racist position is not a single interrupted no. process. There's a big section of the people in this country, whites that are like non-racist, you know, mm -hmm. consciously racist. They're influenced by it. Uh, they're not anti-racist either. You know what I'm saying? And so you got to think about who you're talking to and what issues 
motivate them. Anyway, there'll be a lot more conversation about that tomorrow evening, I imagine, uh, in that webinar, which is discussing the uh, a program. And um, if you want to, if you have thoughts on this, this question, how do we win workers uh, away from uh, reactionary movements? You can send your thoughts to discussion at cpusa.org. That's discussion at cpusa.org. Um, or if you have thoughts on other aspects of the party's work, that's the email address for pre-convention discussion submissions. So we'd love to hear from you. And some people do move. And, and if you're one of them, you know, like there's some people who are like on the far right, the far right skinheads, you know, and who have broken with that. And, and uh, it would be very interesting to hear those stories and uh, so that we can share them. Um, so if that includes you, we'd uh, love to hear from you, absolutely. Uh, it's and, really important because you're right, Scott, we do have to address the entire class and we cannot give up on uh, any section of that. My dad was a steel worker and I remember that when they first started raising the issue of affirmative action, there was a section of the black workers who were like, you know, these guys are never going to agree mm -hmm. with this and so on and so forth. But my dad kind of stood strong and said, no, we gotta continue to engage them. Yeah. And finally, the union, Steel Workers Union, developed a positive affirmative uh, pro position on the struggle for affirmative action and that helped build unity. And then what happened? The industry collapsed <laughs> and all those workers lost their jobs. Uh, but the lessons that were learned are important and it's really and, important to And share. part of it is also like the, the basis of Marxism, but the, I think the most basic aspect of the theory is, you know, the, that the working class um, is the, the, the sort of central force responsible for transforming society in a positive direction. And right have to like we can't you know if we're gonna if we're gonna be serious about marxism we, we have to stick to that you know it's not a, i um, remember there was a guy in the steel workers union his name was oliver montgomery he became a vice president of the steel and i remember he told that story at my dad's funeral so something that i've never forgotten um so what else do we have uh, medicare for all uh they Trump wants to cut, talking about self-interest, Medicare by $870 billion or some absurd figure like that. So our action of the week is on fighting for Medicare against the cuts. Um, and uh, so if you wanna fill out a petition on that, go to our website, you can find it on the front page. You can click on the link and uh, and also on our Facebook page and take take some action on it. You know, there was a guy who wrote in who said, why do you want to preserve it? Shouldn't we abolish it? Um, isn't that the communist position? Abolish it. That's, and a, that's a common misperception. Like, like we want to, you know, there, well, uh, what's her name? Naomi. Um, Naomi, Naomi Klein? Klein called the shock doctrine her this idea of like disaster Very line. Yeah. yeah so the, the the it's a very capitalist idea like you get rid of ever destroy everything and then you you know build your capitalist utopia a lot mm -hmm. of people think about communism i think in that way as well which strikes me as wrong like the working class has built on everything that exists uh, it's come about through struggle every positive thing um right. so the trick is to we're not gonna give up everything we fought for and then try to build something new. We're gonna build it on the base of and out of the movements and the, the, the gains that- Exactly, that's, that's, that's really important. You know? Let's build on what we have achieved. Make it for better. example, uh, uh, Medicare for All is now a major demand. Everybody on the, like the broad left is talking about it. Right. That would not have been possible if we hadn't, um, rallied to win the Affordable Care Act in 2010. As limited, as insufficient as it was, it was like a, a doorstop that held something open that we're now, you know, turning into something much, a much bigger, much more advanced demand. Okay, so we're 
we have the, we're talking about the program. We have our question of the week. Starting for Medicare, is there anything else that we want to share with people before we end our program this evening, uh, this um, morning, other than fighting for social revolution now? Oh, yes. Um, uh, yeah. Um, you got a new shirt on. Oh, no, this is, this is an old one, but I haven't worn it in a while. This it says, people in nature before profits. It was nice. from the actually. Nice. Yeah. Can you get that on the uh, party website? I think uh, so. I don't think so. This was a, a limited oh. issue uh, shirt from an action in Chicago, I think. I see. I see. Okay. Well, we need to make some more. Our convention is coming up, and we need to have T-shirts and buttons and all of those kinds of uh, things. One of the interesting things that I'm interested in talking about, and uh, it's a growing trend, and that is the de-idealization of politics, you know? Mm -hmm. The idea that you, that you, Kamer okay, wrote into us from France, you know, and he said that among some of the social movements there and in other countries in Europe, they're calling for uh, an end to talking about socialism and communism, mm -hmm. and left and right. And, um, you know, that's an interesting uh, development. And so um, I don't know how prevalent it is here. But it's important for us to be aware of these different trends. So maybe next week we might dig into that a little bit. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, that'd be a, I think that'd be a great idea. Um, uh, my, my daughter has decided that the prospect of, of giving up ideas like socialism and communism is just <laughs> depressing. Uh, so I think I'm going to have to... Uh, Yes, I'm gonna to have to bow out. Oh, I think we, I think we're at the end of the process now. So goodbye, Lucia. Said have bye. a good one. Thanks for sharing the applesauce. Look at this <laughs> blushing. All, all right, right. Uh, take care. Well, take we'll care. see everybody you. next week. Uh, you all take care. Have a good one. Bye bye. Later. Fight the ruling class power. Power to the people.